Hey guys, so welcome back to the channel and let's get back to the SJM case. We haven't heard back anything official from the police department's so-called non-investigation into SJM's father's claims and criminal charges against Mr. A, but we do have something very interesting that popped up in terms of clearer video footage and a 3D modeling of the critical time period that relates directly to the father's criminal charges. So remember when SJM's father first filed the charges, we weren't exactly sure what he focused on in terms of the evidence, but we did know the category that he filed the charges under, which were assault, like physical assault, and then abandonment. So those were the two main charges, and he was essentially accusing Mr. A of somehow physically assaulting or hitting uh, his son and the light is going on and off i'm gonna take that as sjm is here with us so he was accusing he was accusing mr a of hitting his son and abandoning him and we do now know from his blog that he was focusing on the 3.31 a.m. mark. Now, what is very interesting is that we do have some new uh, YouTubers that have come out onto the scene. And Chongyi TV brought this up in, to my attention. And so we're going to watch some of the raw footage together. And first is a 3D representation. So you know how like we've got some of the zoomed up footage and you can look at some of that if you haven't seen it already. And we have that analysis. And basically what we're going to look at essentially, if you haven't seen it already, it's the theory of the 331 zoomed up footage. It's the theory that Mr. A pushed over SJM at 331, 332. And that's how the bodies got over to the riverbank. And then around 335, only Mr. A emerged. At that point, we only had very grainy, zoomed up images. Also, for people who didn't really grasp the concept of the riverbank, because honestly, who could? I was even surprised that I could follow because when somebody was, you know, when I first saw it and they were going to, they were telling me like, okay, can you follow along this? I was just like, I doubt I'll be able to even follow along that but eventually I was able to see it but if you weren't able to see it and you were just kind of taking it on faith well now there is 3D modeling that really gives a clear 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 representation of all of those like little blobs and so we're going to look at that together and we'll be able to see that. And then we'll also be able to see somebody just like 4K'd, like, you know, enhanced the original um, CCTV that we've been watching in a zoomed up format. So we get a clearer sense of the blobs. Now we're going to test it. Now we're going to test it even more with a clearer evidence and we're going to see, is this a done deal? I mean, does this really now let us warrant a better investigation? Okay, so I'm going to play this and we're going to watch it together in a bit. I'll try to match up some of the timelines or I'll speed it up for you in the sake of time. But this is a great aerial shot so we're watching it from above this guy used a combination of google maps i believe i'll leave the link so you can go directly to it and also you know help hit subscriber count and views and now we're zooming in and you should be able to now recognize what we're looking at so now we're looking at it from the perspective of the bunny tunnel and the cctv he'll draw the angles as well 
And what is interesting, the first thing that we need to um, realize is that when we see the push, from the angle that we saw, it looks left to right, especially with that big pole in the way. It looked left to right. But then the point that he wants to make with this 3D rendering is that it's actually a push from like front to back. So because the the filming was at an angle to the two boys, like they were they were front and back, but we were looking at them from the side. So from the camera, it looks front to back. So you could see that was the push. You can see numbers on the screen that shows the representations of the witnesses and also timestamps of the important places. So 331 shows the important time period of the push 427 that's and then the number six that's the sixth witness and 427 that's where they supposedly woke up mr a at 427 32 that's 332 and see this is the two guys front and back pushing each other so that's the representation So the theory here is, is that there was some sort of a push and a fall and he fell back and hit his head, him being SJM. And you could see like, you know, there are people there. There are people on the bench. There are people on the ground. And why didn't they necessarily see? Or why weren't they called in for questioning? That's a good point. But remember when I went to go visit and I was just literally like, I would say, four steps away from the edge and I couldn't see what was down there. That was the weird part of it. And that's the shady part. That's the scary part of this whole embankment. And now I see why... Even though there were other people there, you can kind of be unaware of what could be happening right down on the riverbank. Now, this is really cool as well because we can now see from a bird's eye view where the 218 witnesses were. So that's 218, right? So that they weren't there at that time. This is 332. They also put witness number one over there but remember we revised that because it was supposed that they were supposedly where these witness number ones where that red is supposed to be but then you know witness number one actually may not even be there so again that might be even be a false witness otherwise they should be here to have witnessed exactly this movement and push right Right? If they were there, if they were there, they should have been able to explain what is this movement? What is this thing that looked like a push? So if anything, if anything, they should be asked, did you see anybody push anybody? What is this sudden movement can you explain it and as we are clarifying and getting a clo clearer picture they should be able to answer that question if they were really there and now we have photographic evidence that they weren't there so it might be hard for them to answer that question especially if they were asked again, was SJM on the grassy knoll on the picnic mat at 338 as you claimed? Looks like he wasn't there. That would also be a very difficult question to answer again. All right, so now this is another view. So this guy has done an amazing 3D rendering 
giving us all sorts of angles. So you could see the path, you can see the deck, and you can see the grass. So there's the grass uh, closer to the riverbank divided by the pathway and then the long grassy area that I showed you when I went to go visit. So they are literally at the water's edge. That tree is literally hugging the edge, remember? That's the tree that he climbed and he did the little photo shoot. And that's it. That gives you this very clear picture of what happened during that time and what it looked like while they were moving around. So if you've had a hard time imagining what it was, that should give you a good idea. All right, so now let's test our theories. We've been having to kind of piece together an image in our own minds based on some of this blurry image and essentially draw that 3D image in our head, but now we've had it in our head now. Let's try to see what would happen if we had a clearer image of the original CCTV. This is quite amazing as well. Because somebody was able to just put kind of like almost like a like a filter that just enhanced the resolution. All right, so let me get my notes up because there are some key moments to look out for. So keep watching because we started at 3.30 a.m. Remember the critical time period. You definitely want to get ready at the 3.31 a.m. mark. 3.31.50. If you sneeze or blink, you will miss it. Okay. I'll play it multiple times as well. But do you see how clear this is? How much clearer? So you can really start to see now, like, what is a pole? What is a tree? What is the water? Because... I mean, to be honest, sometimes I was confused, like, what part was the water? What part was the part of the bridge? Now you have much more confidence to, to, to know, like, when something is moving, is that a human or is that a car or is that, like, a reflection in the water? All right, we're almost there. 3.31.55 is when SJM falls over to the right our right of the big pole. Get ready. Get ready. Did you see it? Okay. Hold on to your hats and glasses. And Mr. A follows at 3.32.04. Oh, yeah. If <laughs> while I was talking, he already went over. Let's play that again. I'm going to back it up so that you can see SJM fall over. 3.31.55. Mr. A goes over. See? They're both over the river bank. So see that thin black line? That is the line of demarcation that shows the border and it's it's down. And that translucenty thing, that is actually the water. Now there are people moving and walking. Now you want, I'll, you'll see, let's see it one more time. OK. 
Okay. 331.55 is when SJM seems to get pushed over. Three thirty two oh three is when Mr. A follows. Yeah. Okay. Now the two observers start moving towards them at three thirty two sixteen. Take a look. See? Now, the first one starts sprinting at 3.32.40. They're taking a look. They're getting freaked out. And watch. This one bolts. 3.32.40 starts running. And now we clearly see that he is out of the frame by 3.32.45. The second one just kind of walks briskly. And he's out of the frame by 3.32.55. You can track their the bottom of their feet behind the trees that we I don't think I could have done that in the original CCTV where it was more blurry now that it's clearer you can totally see that the first one only took five seconds to just run out of there and the other one kind of took its took his time 15 seconds to get out of the frame something freaked them out one ran the other one just probably tried to keep his cool just walked so this enhanced clarity i think gives us a lot more confidence to see that there is something to see that there is something to investigate that there is something else going on and that there is something more to the story because it clearly shows that Mr. A did not just fall asleep on the grassy knoll because he himself, it's proven, was there until 4.27 a.m. It is proven that he has been there the whole entire time. And so now we're just trying to piece together how his movements went from A to B. And he's not even the main focus of the investigation. It just gives a clearer indication of how SJM could have gotten down there. The next point of interest we see is that 3.35.29, Mr. A comes back up. How do we know this and how do I know this? When you kind of come back up, there's this kind of like steep incline. So it's like a grandpa heave ho up. I didn't want to admit this, but yeah, I was like, oh, am I out of shape? But like even you, you can even tell the posture that it's like a Whoa, up. So I'm glad that even a guy half my age, same posture. So 335, 29, Mr. A comes back up. Yep. Okay, so then we have 335, right? So then the phone call is around 337, apparently. So we have this slight movement in that area and we've had reports before saying that there was some pacing like near the tree so if you look near the tree there is movement there and remember he was near the tree when he was on the phone So 337, we do see some movement near the area again. And the area meaning like that entrance area. 
And then at three, <sighs> I'm burning up, man. This is exciting. And 3.37.45 is when we see that flash from the photo that shows Mr. A talking to his parents from the tree. The flash was so bright that we did even see it in the blurry CCTV. But we do see it here again as well. Even more brighter, even brighter. And yes, the light is still flashing above me. I think that's SJM. Okay, so did you see the flash? That was the flash. So now around 338, 340, we have... All these people start walking around, walking around the park. I don't know. It was as if like it's a movie, like, you know, and then the director was like, all right, everybody, let's have all the extras come in and out. And so like, where were all these people? Why weren't they called in for questioning? Where were their statements? It is still a mystery. So is this enough compelling information for you? Or is this a done deal? Does this show that there is enough information that we do know, even from the evidence from the police that SJM was alive before this time, and even from the testimony, somebody said he was alive at 3.38. And then Mr. A emerged at 4.27 alone as Sham was gone. And he wasn't alive. They're trying to make it look like perhaps he just walked in. That's what they're really trying to do. But we're seeing that position fall apart and just disintegrate. What we are seeing now, most likely, is a high likelihood that he got pushed or he at least fell. Even if he fell, most likely somebody who fell like that would not be able to walk. I couldn't even take one step on one, on the first rock into the water without slipping and I wasn't even trying to go into the water like I was just trying to like I like I did and that was really like just for you guys I wanted to dip my hand into the water and so literally, I wasn't just kind of trying to jump in there and get into a refreshing bathing situation. I just wanted to kind of like, you know, put my hand in and I literally just slipped on the first rock. And, you know, yeah, maybe I'm a city boy, but I've been, I've been to my fair share of campsites, rivers, I know how to like hop across streams and rivers and climb up a mountain or two, you know. I don't usually slip on rocks and these were slippery. It was like slime and moss. It's probably that eel stuff. So I do not think that it was it would be very possible for somebody to have survived a fall like that because that fall was very treacherous. There was like no clearance 
absolutely no clearance. It was, it's almost as if like you fell on not even an embankment. It was just like, kind of like hill rocks. So what do you guys think? Does this bring a clearer picture to 331? And does this warrant an actual investigation, not just a fake kind of like follow up, you know, kind of like a denouement investigation from the police when they said like, oh, yeah, we're all done with the official investigation. But yeah, that's kind of like, yeah, we'll just throw that in. It's kind of like a bonus for you, you know, like if we find something, we'll find something. But, you know, we're really done and there's nothing we can do. Like, that's essentially what they're telling SJM's father, I guess, until he goes away. I That's pretty much how it seems as if they're treating this. However, SJM's father can really push this and at least send it to the prosecution. It's just unpredictable where the prosecution is in terms of their loyalties and where they have their skin in the game. But the more clear evidence that we can bring to the public and make it more irrefutable for them to deny justice, perhaps, perhaps SJM will be able to rest in peace. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Tune in next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Love you.